in the bottom left, in the red. Samsung Galaxy Khan Solar. And in the upper left, we have our blue Protoss. He is. Gene Air Green Wings SOS. All right. <laughs> that was kind of a cute sign. I was trying to think of something funny to say the whole time. I had nothing. Nothing came. Never um, does, really. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, Protoss not cannon rushing this game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, good choice. I mean, this is a map that, you know, it's so big, it really does. And especially these spots, I would say, do favor Protoss a bit. They're so close that Zerg is going to have a hard time actually playing that huge macro economy game because Protoss can kind of march down directly towards them. And there's, there's like two paths, right? There's, there's one that goes by the watchtower that they're scouting on right now, or the probe is rather. And then there's another one that goes down through the, the high ground areas. So, uh, you know, I feel like it's a, a little bit Protoss favored in these spots like this. It's going to be hard as Zerg to, you know, take the easy four bases that Protoss can get. <laughs> He's going to fake oh, out. This is so funny. Cannon rushing. Of course. This is cute. And we have the drones already pulled. So there's like, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> um, so Playing up his image. Yeah. Well, this is how you play a best of three correctly. Mm -hmm. He's blocking Lots all the of angles. Mind games. Cancels that. As you can see, now those drones have to go back home. Yeah. Yes, Protoss loses money in the cancel of the pylon, but of course, Zerg uh, loses money with those drones not mining as well. That is quite correct. We do have the Cyber Next score coming up. So not skimping on his tech. Sometimes you see a, a Protoss player like pull out a gas and skip the Cyber Next score and then just go for the the quicker nexus against a build like this, but instead he's like, no, you know, I want to tech up in normal time and, and get the nexus just slightly later against this triple hatch build. Okay, so um, there's a lot of different tech options here for SOS. I would say SOS probably the favorite to win this series based on the map pick. Uh, he is pretty safe here. Yeah. Tucked up in this upper left location. I, I'm very interested in the style he uses, though, because Solar is kind of... I feel like he's got, like, kind of encyclopedic knowledge on what to do against just about everything Protoss can do. Like, all these different situations. Well, he's also very I feel like good at very games well. in a very decisive manner. Yeah. And so that makes me a little bit scared, because SOS is still a Protoss who will use things like Sky Toss, for instance. He'll still go three Stargate Void Ray and charge lots. You know, he'll still go for Psy Storm before Colossus. He has a lot of uh, kind of eccentric type of plays that he likes in the matchup, which both makes him strong and weak in certain ways. You know, the reason, for instance, why that isn't necessarily something you see a lot from other players is because it can't, it's a little bit fragile at times. Yeah. And I feel like Solar is the right type of Zerg to punish SOS for doing something wild and out there. Oh, it looks oh. like he's going to get this Overlord here. Mm -hmm. That Overlord turns really quickly. Uh, no. So that goes down. The Wallen is going to finish up here. Ooh, nice control there on the Mothership Core. Yeah. So bad at that myself. Ah, looks like we're going to have a three-gate pressure. I actually didn't notice that. Speed just now starting, so this actually could be pretty good. Where, where is Do you a have any pylons? Probe? He has a probe oh, no, wait, down wait, there, there. There's one in the bottom center that we just don't have vision of. There it is. It's yeah, a pylon now. just started it, looks like. Okay, so... Uh, I, yeah, he has two Stalkers and a Mothership Core, so he's going to have five Stalkers pressuring against one Ling, three Queens. That's very, very nice. And speed is a ways off. Uh, okay, so 18 Ling's coming. He actually has realized what's going on. And with the speed halfway there, uh, he will be able to stop this. This isn't going to do too much damage. Okay, so he's coming in now. Now he'll be fine if uh, this doesn't work. SOS will be... He can yeah, still back out. Pretty it's not all in. No, not at all. It's just a pressure build. Um, with the recall here, I mean, he has a lot of freedom to just keep the Zerg uh, manufacturing and attacking units and mm -hmm. not workers. Is he going to go for that queen? Yeah, that's definitely part of uh, the point here. Look, notice how he hasn't warped in any additional units. The yeah. warp in round came I was actually went. wondering if he was going to try to Oh, he was supply blocks. 
Oh my god, what is happening? Why are those stalkers not with the Mothership Corps? <laughs> uh, he's coming up now. Alright, he's gonna need to recall right there. Oh, oh loses wow. one. A little bit sloppy there. But you know what? He forced a lot of speedlings there. Uh, he's currently, it looks like, walling in that third base ramp, so... Uh, he has a backup plan here. He forced yep. a bunch of units, and now he's like, all right, that's, that's actually fine. a great build here from SOS. Yeah, it's really good. And look at that. Whoa. He's all set at the wall in already. No way to break through Did with those links. Did he squeeze through those stalkers? Uh, Did he have no, actually I, ran through there with the links? I don't think so. And there were sentries, so it was, like, really risky if he yeah, tried, yeah. even if he could. I was could. just wondering. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have 50 drones now for Zerg. And he's going to keep on producing. Protoss is taking his third. But there's a chance Zerg will take his fourth shortly here. The Forge is about to finish up. And the Twilight uh, Council started here. Oh. And uh, a little bit later upgrades in some of the games with Protoss we've seen due to the nature of SOS's mm -hmm. build. I wonder what the plan is here for Solar. You know, he's he, we can't really tell what it is yet. Obviously, he's getting Roach Warren, something you just kind of need against Protoss. He's going up to his lair. He's droning up heavily. But he's playing against someone who got a very quick third. His drones didn't uh, hit the number he wanted as quickly as he wanted to because he had to make those extra lings. Uh, but, like, I, I really do... Oh, a Dark Shrine. That's really weird. Um, but I do question what his plan is. He throws down a Spire. So we might see him play a little bit like we saw Effort play, where it's Roach, uh, Ling, into a lot of Mutas after he gets a decent You think there's a chance he'll try to counterattack like we saw uh, Effort do against Rain? Well, if if uh, SOS like hits a strong attack right as the Muta switch is happening, where he has enough stalkers that he wins a straight fight, I feel like that's almost the only thing that you can do is try to win the base race. Uh, you know, when a Protoss player has his has stuff together that much and everything has gone his way in the game, like we saw with Rain. You so. think the uh, Dark Shrine was triggered by something he saw with the Phoenix? Hmm, it's a good question. Uh, to be honest, I. I don't think so. I think he was just going to make the Dark Shrine because he's SOS, but I could be wrong on that. It's just a guess. He does have the Warp Prism on the way, so he's going to be able to do a, a Warp in with DTs into that main base. Do have some more Gates on the way as well. Plus one going to be finishing up pretty soon here. Well, the uh, Legs of Roaches are coming up now on the left side. Looks like they want to be in a spot to uh, go around the army. If he does come out, we have a huge gateway explosion here. Eight mutas on the way. Uh, the fourth base here for Zerg about to finish up. SOS is Ooh. looking like he's going to have a pretty powerful uh, army going to be uh, pumped out here very yeah. shortly. But with the number of mutas coming out, I mean, Zerg can be in pretty good control of this game. This was not a, a Stargate build here from SOS, so Zerg can really control stuff. We have a... Warp Prism coming down now as well, and I think this is going to get intercepted, Ooh. like, directly, man. That would be fantastic oh, never for Solar. mind. Ah, uh, well. Oh, man. <laughs> I heard the whole the audience The whole go, audience, yeah. Ah. You know, these eight mutas are actually very interesting. He's actually trying to force, like, uh, he's going to do some harassment with them, obviously, but he's not staying on mutas. It's only going to be eight. He's not even getting the plus one attack. So, will SOS bite and over counter? We'll see in a minute here. We have one over here in the main. Uh... So hopefully for Solar's sake, he'll spot these DTs uh, in time. Yeah, and actually, uh, Solar's completely retracted. He's actually gone back to his base. He's trying to defend against these uh, this DT attack here. The DT's getting a good amount of kills on all these workers. Yeah, I'd like to see the actual uh, worker kill count. 16. Jesus. That's, That's crazy, crazy, man. That's so good. Yeah. I, SOS is just so good at this. He always knows when something like this is going to work. I just... Damn, dude. I need to just sit down with him and ask him some questions about when he chooses to do things like that. It's yeah. so crazy. There's um, very few Protosses that just are like, oh, I'm making the Dark Shrine here, and for sure I'm going to get a bunch of kills. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Rut row. So it looks like he will uh, just barely not. Oh, we'll take that out. Excuse me. So the Mutas are just staying mobile on the map here. We have a Hydra mm -hmm. Tech switch. Yeah, and look uh, at this. SOS didn't really buy it on the Mutas. He never made any uh, Stargates or anything. He may have been because his Phoenix saw no plus one upgrading in that Spire. Kind of a little bit of a hint that those were a, a little bit of a fake. Of course, they're good for harassment still, but, you know, not a big commitment on Mutas. Now he's moving forward with Roachling Hydra. Wants to make sure that fourth base not taken yet. You know, I'm getting a little bit worried here for uh, Solar later on. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, SOS gets a big enough... Powered army here. I mean, then again, Solar is attacking in over here. Let's see how he does with this attack. It looks like uh, SOS is uh, 
prepared in most locations here. To, actually, in all locations, he's not going to be broken. Yeah, he just has the force fields here to just hold it for now. But you know what? He's kind of forcing him around a little bit. His muters are hitting various places. He's forcing a lot of energy out. Look at this counterattack over here. A lot of force field energy going to be going away. And this is just going to make... Uh, you know, some engagements in a little bit, a little bit harder. He's gonna get that forge. That's a fantastic pickoff right there. Oh my God, he's gonna lose that war prism. Yeah, he's starting to pick units off left and right. Solar, you're looking like the Zerg single player here. <laughs> um, there's just so much there at the front of that base. Now, note, SOS does deflect this, but mm -hmm. the supply lead here goes to Solar, who's actually maxed out again. It's yeah. 138 supply for. SOS, so. He picked off the mothership um, core there, Tasteless, and there's no sentries left. This was actually very effective by Solar. Now, SOS is making Colossus off of two Robos, so that's actually a very big deal. Uh, once he starts getting a lot of those, he can really fight back against this type of army, but this army is really big and strong right now, and only one Colossus is out. Oh my god, he's going to just uh, dive into that Colossus. The Colossus is far back enough now. Yeah, it's attacking uh, this, a Robo now. This, what is that attacking a Robo? Oh, that's so painful to see. Uh, I think this is actually just too much. Is, is Solar just going to run him over? There's no more Colossus here. I think he is. He's killed a yeah. lot of probes. Uh, he's Next killed the Colossus. It's just Blink Stalkers, and you can't just sit in Blink Stalkers all day. Okay, well, here comes another Colossus, so I think he's going to barely hold this attack off. But it's actually two base against four. That other Colossus slept in. He's like, sorry, guys, what's going on? <laughs> so um, the Nexus is coming down now at the third base. Uh, I think Zerg just remacros or remasses up, remaxes out, and just attacks hmm. in again. I mean, look look at the uh, minerals here for Zerg. I mean, he could make a ton of roaches. Yeah, this is kind and of an interesting situation. I would, I think that making a ton of roaches would be very smart. I think he would do that now because he just saw that this army is actually moving towards him. Uh, we'll see about that in a moment, but... Oh, he's getting some Corruptors here, too. We don't know how many Corruptors actually hatched already. Yeah. But a lot of, a lot of times when the Protoss is behind and is with Stalker, um, Colossus, sometimes you can just blindside him with a bunch of Corruptors, Roaches, Lynx, Hydras. Yeah, it's he's staying on that layer tech. He's not trying to get up to Vipers or anything like that. The thing is, SOS is afraid he might be because he has no way to scout. He has no War Prism. Yep. He has no sentries for hallucination. So he's blindly making this uh, this Templar Archives, realizing that Vipers would be killer right now. But, you know, Solar, he's saying, whatever, that's fine. I'm going to stay on this layer tech for now. He realizes he has this nice big advantage. And, you know, after killing that many sentries... His opponent can't just sit there and make sentries again, you know? He has to prepare for possible Vipers. He has to make Colossus to actually have splash damage. Uh, and he has to continue to warp in some Stalkers probably as well. Okay, uh, another warp in here. Now some Zealots and Templars. As Storm is being chrono boosted out here. Uh, Zerg, though, is maxed out again and has nothing more to do than to send his entire army mm. over here. Uh, and just start to try to run over this base. And actually, he can get the hatch here. Oh, look at this surface area, Tasteless. He can actually get the Robo here if he wants to. And one Colossus goes down. Looks like a second one is going to go down here as well. And you can see the Corruptors. Really, there's nothing about uh, placement here for the rest of the army that's going to stop these Corruptors. Mm. They come in here now. It's just Stalkers. Stalkers alone. Uh, we only see Stalkers. It, it's either a really good thing or a really bad thing for Protoss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in this case, well it's a very bad thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, this is a ton of damage, taking out this Nexus right now. And he's remaxing out. I mean, we got Roaches. Yeah. yeah, there it is. GG. Solar. Fantastically played. You can see why he wanted Protosses in his group. He's really one of the best CVPers out there, really knows well, exactly how and when to kill people. Here's the thing, Arto says. He's got the Protoss in the world to go up against. Yes. It's going to be rain here. I'm so in excited. Our third best of three. That is that is a match that I want to see. I think every player, everyone interested in StarCraft of the World should want to see this. This is like... The Protoss that everyone wants to be and wishes they were uh, against just the Protoss killer. Like, this guy just showed how ridiculously good he is. He knows what to do all the time. Rain knows what to do all the time. What happens when that those two face each other? I think it's going to be pretty tough for Solar, but we're going to have to see. We're going to go to a short little break. When we come back, we're going to go on to our third best of three here and find out who's going to be the first player to get out of Group B in the GSL Codex. Stay tuned.